Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for coming, and thanks to uh, Dr. DeBoer for organizing these science seminars. I'm really glad to have them back up and running regularly again. And uh, thank you to Dr. Wesley for giving the talk today. I've been asked to introduce Dr. Wesley, even though I know a lot of you may know him. You may have had classes with him. Uh, some of you haven't, so let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, Dr. Wesley did his undergraduate in math and computer science at Louisiana Tech. And then he did his PhD in mathematics at Texas Tech, uh, specializing in differential equations and mathematical modeling, specifically differential equations that model the spread of disease, which people have kind of become more interested in lately. This talk's not about that, but I'm sure you can uh, uh, talk to Dr. Wesley about that if you're interested, or you can take the course Math Modeling from him. That's a good course. So I think we're offering it in the spring, yes? Hey, there you go. Uh, another thing uh, I might like to say about uh, Dr. Wesley is that he's been a great friend and colleague to me. He's been here the entire time I've been here. Uh, he's been here, is this your 12th year? Yeah. Now 12 years, a long time. So a full professor, uh, he's been here a long time. Uh, I had the privilege of being here, being with Dr. Wesley whenever this idea came to him. You know, you don't always get to see a person have, you know, real-time revelations, but sometimes an idea will just hit you, and you just can't stop thinking about it. Well, I got to see that with Dr. Wesley. It was during a department meeting. <laughs> so, uh, at the beginning he was talking about, you know, I always encourage my students in senior seminar to come up with a math education game. I always encourage them to say, nobody's ever taken me up on it. And then he, I saw this little light flash, and his eyes got big, he got a real big smile on his face. And during the whole department meeting, he was smiling really big and nodding, but he wasn't nodding about what we were meeting about. <laughs> and he was taking notes. And he was taking notes, but he wasn't taking notes on what we were talking about. And I kept looking over. This is when Miss Nelson's department chair. I kept looking over. I was like, what's he doing? There's like triangles and circles and what is it? So I think by the end of that department meeting, he had the main idea for, for the game. It was kind of fun to watch in real time. So uh, you get to hear it more about it now. So thank you, Dr. Wesley. <laughs> Thanks for hearing that. I really yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> well, I am Dr. Curtis Wesley. This game is called One. Uh, it's uh, you can think of it as one, like a magical one, but then cut off the D, the one. And uh, I'll tell you what that means a little bit later. That's the Chinese character for uh, one. And my slogan is, even if you lose, you won. <laughs> now, what is this game about, right? What we need to talk about, what do we mean by players? And why do we play games in the first place, right? Why do we engage in play? And if you guys know, we do that for relaxation, right? For escaping reality. I know I like to play video games, probably you guys do too. It's a good way to relax, escape reality for a few bits of time, especially during COVID. I know that could be a big thing. To interact and socialize with each other, right? People like to play rugby. I know that's a rugby team going on around here, right? You can interact, socialize, make new friends while you play. But it's also to learn how to think about the world, to learn about the world. I know kids play peekaboo, right? They love to play peekaboo. Why are they doing that? Because they're just surprised whenever they see their adult show up again, right? What's their, like that's peekaboo, and they're like, whoa, this is cool. And they love playing that. They're learning about the world through this play. And during the summer, uh, the math club, uh, math department did a, uh, read a book uh, by Francis Sue, Mathematics for Human Flourishing. And he says about the topic of play, mathematics makes the mind the playground. Doing math is engaging in a kind of play. Having fun with ideas that emerge when you explore patterns and cultivating wonder about how things work. So mathematics, believe it or not, can be relaxing. It can be escape from reality as you think about these ideas. You are often interacting with other people who are thinking about the same types of ideas and concepts. You are learning about how the world works and how mathematics works in general. So mathematics is this type of play. It is this kind of thing that we're engaging in. So the question is, how do you guys engage? Or how do you play with mathematics? Well, you're like, I don't play with mathematics very much. But you can play with mathematics through games. And this, of course, that's what the topic of this is all about. How can we play with math through games? 
So what is a game? What is a game? Uh, well, there's lots of different definitions for game. Many, many different definitions. One of them that probably is a little bit controversial uh, is by Jay Gao, and he states that game needs to have two or more players who take turns, each competing to achieve a winning situation of some kind, each able to exercise some choice about how to move at any time through the play, right? So you have to have choice, you have to have this interaction, and so he gives an illustration of shoots and ladders. Has anybody played shoots and ladders before, right? So when you play shoots and ladders, really you're not making any decisions, right? You're not making any decisions at all. Yet the game is a totally by a chance game. And so whether you go up the ladder or you go down the chute, really doesn't matter. It's all random or what you draw. And so that, he would consider this not to be a game. So what types of games did I grow up with? And what types of games did you grow up with? Well, I grew up in a poor uh, black neighborhood, but we like to play games, especially during the summer underneath a shade tree, right? We will often see games being played. We like to play Uno, right? Everybody loves Uno, right? This is one of, everybody has their own house rules for Uno, right? No, nobody plays it the same way. You always have to ask, what rules do you play with for Uno? Monopoly, we like to hustle, and so we like to hustle quite a bit with Monopoly, right? Especially family reunions. We can get a good Monopoly game going on. And then dominoes. Oh, dominoes, right? Uh, in, in, the, it's, in the black community I grew up in, we played dominoes fast, right? You have to count the five, so you have to do multiples of five. I don't know if you guys played that way. But it's multiple fives, and you have to be fast. You're just slamming those dominoes down real fast. And you got to be quick. If you take too long, they get mad. So you got to be quick when you're counting in dominoes. And of course, we have spades. You guys thought it was going to be poker, but spades, that's the game that we play in our community as well. It's a wonderful thing. And it kept us together. It, it gave us a sense of community. And I just love playing games when I was a kid, right, in our community. It was just a wonderful time. So I, when I came here to Maternal University, we have a senior seminar, which is for our math students. And they have to come up with their research. Uh, project and they had to do some research and come up with a kind of creative idea in mathematics. And they always asked me for topics. And so I would give them some topics. And I was like, hey, I like games. Why not create a new board game that's based on math, right? Why would you do that? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Or you could try to cr create a dice game <coughs> based on math, right? That's, that seems like something you could do. Right? Be creative. You can do it. I encourage them all. Come on, guys, do it. And none of them would take me up on the offer. They're like, we're just going to do something else. We don't want to do that. That's too much work. And that made me so sad. So, of course, Dr. Cross was saying, I was frustrated about this. I'm like, why do they don't do, why they don't do anything of games? And so Dr. Taylor came to the rescue during that meeting that we talked about earlier in 2019. <laughs> Dr. Judy Taylor, who most of you guys probably have not seen before, right? You haven't seen Dr. Taylor. But she just retired, not just retired, but she's been retired for about three years now. We were talking about a particular math subject. And by the way, if you know what the game is based on, please don't tell anybody else. Don't spoil the surprise for anybody else. I'll let you guys know at the end of the, of the presentation what the game is about. So if you know, keep it zip. But there was a particular math subject that was being taught. And she was just kind of frustrated because it seemed like people would have a mental block whenever they even engaged with these, this type of mathematics. And so we started talking back and forth about this, and we were like, yeah, why is that? And I had an idea. I said, could I create a game with simple rules based on that math subject that college students could play? Then I said, wait a minute, that high school students could play. And I was like, no, 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 wait a minute, that middle school students could play. No, elementary students could play. Ah, can I come up with that type of game? <coughs> and a couple of weeks later, one was born. And so here we have the start, the birth of my new game. So at that time also, luckily for me, Lick, the Laternal Ingenuity Center was created, right? Dr. DeBoer was the one who created this, who founded this. 
and it was designed to help Laterno students, uh, Laterno faculty and students to patent their ideas. Okay. And so I said, maybe I could patent my idea. I was like, I really like it. I think it's something. I think it's wonderful. So maybe I could patent it. So I quickly put together a patent application, and it was accepted. So I still have the emails that they say, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do it. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we did. <laughs> but fame is hard work. Now, Dr. Cross would say how excited I was about this game. And I actually sent my idea, at least a little bit of my idea, to Hasbro. And they never responded to me. But they get like thousands of these games, you know, just being sent by people. So to make sure that they didn't steal my game later, right, we decided to do a provisional patent immediately. So that's what we did. Because if they saw it was popular, they're like, hey, we're just going to steal this game. No, we're not going to do that. So we filed a provisional patent. And then August of 2020, we filed for a permanent patent. And it has been published. The application has been published. And now we're just waiting on them for revisions and things like that. And currently, Lick and I are, uh, with Gary DeBoer and others, are trying to figure out the best way to market this idea. How, how, how do we best market that idea? So we're working with a marketing team led by Dr. Isabella, and I don't know how to say the last name, John Quera? Quera? Nobody knows? All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and this is most exciting. This semester as well, I have a Laterno software engineering team that is comprised of Jake Rosh, Taylor Bell, and Alex Wildman that are working on a computer version of my game. So I'm really excited about that. So then other people can play it as well. So that's quite, that's quite good. So what's in the name? What's in the name? Why is the game called what? The question has several answers. Answer one, my wife is Chinese. Uh, I met her at Texas Tech University. We got married there. And I wanted, and she helped me to come up with the name. And I really wanted uh, some of her culture to be a part of this game. Right? She's a part of my life, so I wanted this game to also reflect that. One is Chinese, and it means play or to play. So when you hear one, you said you just think of play, right? Play. And so answer two, the name of the game tells you what you're doing. You're playing the game, aren't you? So why? Playing the game. And as to three, I think it's a rather clever name. I think it's a rather clever name. I think it's particularly clever, actually. <laughs> so here are the cards. And you probably have been seeing some of the cards going on the screen back and forth over there. Um, but here are all the cards together. Now notice that I have triangle cards, and I have circle cards, and I have a mixture of the two. You guys see that? Now every card has an opposite, except for the free cards. The opposite of a red triangle card is a hollow red triangle card, right? The opposite of two red triangle cards is a, a, a two hollow triangle cards over there. Everybody see that? They're opposites of each other. Okay, you guys see it? And the way I think about it is that you could place that triangle into the other one and it would complete it. When it, it's just it's like it's like a dating relationship, right? They they complete each other. <laughs> they complete each other. Same thing with this one. This one completes that one. This one completes that one. The only one that doesn't do that is these guys right here. The opposite of this one is this one. See the, that their triangles and the circles are, are reversed on those cards there? You guys see that? So the opposite of this one is this one. They just reverse the cards. In turn, so they'll reverse the symbols of the cards. Same thing with this one and this one. And then we have free cards. And the free cards can replace any cards with their color. So red cards can replace any red card. Red free cards can replace any red card. Green free cards can replace any green card. And the, the Christmas one, the red and the green one, can replace any card in one. Okay. Everybody cool with that? That's very good. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> well, the game is for ages seven and up. Right? That's why I've made this game so that even seven years old can play it. The number of players are from two to four. It's two to four people in the game. And the objective of the game is that we want to score points. And we score points by creating combinations of one hands. So one hands, OK? And every one hand can be a range from one to four points. So you can either, whenever you do a round, you can get one point, two point, three points, or four points. You can't get beyond four points. 
Okay? And so what you're doing is you're trying to create these one hands, and your goal is to win by obtaining 17 points before the other person does. Okay? So they go, you, you're randomly given these cards, and you try to create these one hands. So what are the rules of this game? It's pretty similar to any standard game, right? We have a deck of cards. Each player is dealt five cards. The remaining cards are placed in the middle of the table, and then you flip one over, and that becomes your uh, discard pile. So you have a draw pile, which is your deck of cards. You have your discard pile right there. And during each player's turn, the player must draw a card from either the discard pile or the draw pile. And I'm going to show you guys a simulation of this later so you guys can play along with me, okay? The player must th may then choose to swap the card with the one, one of their own. So they can swap cards with the one of their own or place the drawn card from the draw pile onto the discard pile, okay? So you can either sw swap out that card or just put it down on the discard pile. A person must put down a new card. A person must put down a new card on the discard pile, and this is called the draw phase. So you're drawing, and you can swap cards during the draw phase. Okay, everybody cool? All right, cool, all right. Now, how do you go from here? After the draw phase, the player plays a hand, their one hand. And we're going to look at some of the one hands in just a second. The scorekeeper then tallies that player's new score, and this is called the one phase. One phase. I just love saying one. And then the cards played during the one phase are then removed from the game. So you can't use those cards anymore once you play them, unless you run out of cards, and then you reshuffle those cards to make a new deck. Okay. And a player is allowed to pass during the one phase. So if you don't have anything in your hand, you're like, I don't have a combination, Dr. Wesley. That's okay. You can pass. You're probably not going to win the game, but you can pass, okay? You can pass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And finally, finally, the players draw from the deck until they again have five cards in their hand. So once you play your hand, right, you have less cards in your hand, right? So you want to go back up to five cards so that you can play again the next round. Simple enough. And this is called the redraw phase. And the redraw phase is the player's turn. And the game continues until you get 17 points or somebody else gets 17 points. So don't worry if you lost. This is a game where everybody won. <laughs> so don't worry about this. <laughs> so here are the one hands. How do you score points? This is how you score points in one. I love free cards. Do you guys love free cards in games? I love like wilds and things like that. Well, free cards in one are really nice. A free card can be a point, one point and one. So if you don't have anything else and you have a free card, you can just lay that free card down and guess what? You got one point. Well, man, that's cool. Why would you ever do that? I don't know, but you can. You can, you can just lay that free card down. If you, but another way that you get a one point is if you have two cards that are identical to each other. Two cards that are identical to each other. Let me see if I find two identical cards. Okay, two cards that are identical to each other. If you want to get one point, what do you do? You just cross these cards like this. And that gives you one point. Cool? How can you get two points? You get two points by putting down two free cards. Why would you ever do that? I have no idea. But you can do that. Or you can, lay, you can put down a card and it's opposite and lay them right on top of them, each other parallel. So here's a card, here's his opposite, lay on top of each other parallel, that is worth two points. Cool, everybody good with that? All right. How do you get three points? You can get three points by laying down three free cards. Why in the world would you ever do that? I have no idea. But you can, or you can use what you can, there's three special unique one hands. The first one, let me show you this one. The first one is the two circles and the two triangles. If you put them together side by side like that, that's worth three points. If you put this one above this one, this is worth three points. 
And what I tell the kids when they play it the first time, I say, you see these two circle, these two holes here? They fit right in that part right there, just right above it. You see that? That fits so nicely right there. So that's worth three points. And then if you have this situation, where's the one I'm looking for? I'm looking for a, ha, 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 ha. Here it is. If you have this one with this one, see how it fits in there so nicely, right? That one's also worth three points. Everybody cool with that? One hand. That's a way to get four points. How can you get four points? You get four points by putting down four free cards. Would that ever happen for most people? Probably not, but you can do that. And there's another way to get four points, which is called one more. One more, okay? <laughs> now, my wife and I came up with this word because we thought it was cool. Cute. So it's a made up word. She said that the one is play. That character is to grab again or to touch. That's what she told me, at least. And so we said, you are grabbing again. You're, you're playing again. It's the kind of the, the, what we're trying to say here. And one more can only be played on a unique three point hand. So if you have one of those three unique combinations, then you can do one more. One more. So you get one more point, one more. One more point, one more, right? One more point. <laughs> By playing two identical cards along with your hand. The, the two cards are placed next to the hand with one card placed above the other. So let me show you guys an example of that. Here it is right there, you guys see that? That's my three point hand. And if I want to do one more, I just have to have two cards of the same type I put right next to them. One on top of the, uh, one above the other. And that is one more. Right? One more point. Cool? Everybody got that? One more? <laughs> That's how you get one more point above whatever it is. So, one more. <laughs> all right, all right. One more. <laughs> all right. <laughs> He's excited about it. <laughs> but just one more thing. <laughs> See if I get this play. This is Colombo. Oh, it's so loud. It's so, it's so, you can't hardly hear it, but that's one of Columbo's famous lines. I don't know, most of you guys probably don't know who Columbo is. But that's one more thing I want to say before we start playing this game. These, you see these two circle cards right here? Like, what am I ever going to do with just a single circle card? Ah, if you put one circle card on top of each other, parallel, guess what that equals? Equals one of these guys. Yes. Or if you have two of these guys, parallel, what does it equal? Equals one of these guys. So those guys are not as useless as you think. They're not as useless as you think. They have, you can actually use those things. Can you imagine? What are the possibilities? What about two triangles? Two triangles? You can make a double triangle with it. Yep. Yes? Yes, absolutely. So any, any, any single two cards, if they're identical, lay on top of each other, you can make the double one. Yep. Absolutely. Cool, so in the matrix, let's do a simulation. So let's simulate a couple rounds of an average game of one, okay? While we're going through this simulation, I want you guys to think about what hands you would have made. And you can call out the hands that you might have made too. If, if, you, if you want to raise your hand and say, this is the hand I would have done, feel free to say that, okay? Are your hands the same as the two players that are going to be in our simulation that we have here? <coughs> now, above here, I put the three unique one hands so that you guys can remember. I don't know if you guys remember those three unique one hands, but they're above there, just in case. I think most people have the most difficulty with the three unique ones, but the, like the, the cards and their opposite, most people get. And the big ones with which are identical, most people get. But those three unique one hands, it takes a couple of games before they realize, okay, we got it, we got it. So we have our two players. This lady is a little bit more experienced in the game, okay? And so she is going to be going against this guy who has never played one before. They came to Dr. Wesley's seminar, and they're like, I have no idea what in the world's going on. So we're playing, we have these two guys playing against each other. Here's our deck of cards right there, face down. And we're going to give each player cards. Now, in the game, you don't see each other's cards, right? You're hiding the cards from the other person. But for this game, we have to make it so that everybody sees the cards. Everybody cool with that? All right, so this guy's getting his cards, we're, and we're getting their cards. Oh, he has a free card. Look at that, man. That's good stuff. And then we have this one. Oh, beautiful. 
and then we put a card down. Let me ask you before we even begin, what type of hands would you make with her cards? Do you see any hands you can do with her? Do you see anything over here that you can do with this, this person's hands? Yeah. What? What can you do? <clears throat> you can make a three-point hand on this one? Yeah, you can go. A two-point hand. What's a two-point hand? What would the two-point hand be? The middle one and the first one. The middle one. The triangle. The triangle with the circle and the Oh, triangle circle with her hand? Okay. And what about here, over this side? You can make a three-point with these two right here. A three-point hand with that one. I think so, right? You can make a three-point hand with this one, can't you? Can you make anything else with that? You can make a one-point with a free card. All right, that's good. <laughs> One point with a free card. Let's fight, man. I had a more come up, comeback sound there. It's supposed to say fight, but it, it's not there for some reason. So just, just imagine that that was there. So she's going to play first. Now remember that she has to draw a card from either the discard pile or from the draw pile. So she's going to swap out one of her cards. And guess what she swapped out? She swapped out that one right there. Now what is she going to do? She's going to put down this one, this one, and this one. And what does that give you? A three, four hand. This is, becomes two double triangles, doesn't it? With the two circles, that is going to be three points. And Crash got to the <laughs> Cheers to you, one player. And they were supposed to say, woohoo! But I don't know where my sound is today. It's not, it's not acting up. It's not acting right. And what's the next thing that she needs to do now that she's done that? She needs to draw five cards. Okay, so she's back up to five cards. Now let's see what this guy does. You guys already told me what. So let's see what he does. He's going to switch out. He drew from the draw pile, right? And he's going to, he's, oh, he's swapping out. He's swapping out that one with this one. Was that a good move, you think? Yeah. Bad move, dude. That was a bad move. <laughs> Would you have done that move? No. no. <laughs> so he puts that down, and he puts down, because this, remember, this is his first time playing. He said that I have a card that is opposite, and that is worth how many points? Two points. <laughs> Oh, poor guy. I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a bad move. But that's okay. He's all right. It's all right. Now that he has. Oh, I, that sound effect is in there. That's cool. <laughs> and now he has to draw back up to five cards. Now it's back to her. You see what card she has now. What would you do? What would you do in this situation? What would you do in this situation? You would draw from the drop out? What did she do? She drew from the drop out. Now, what did she get? Now, she can swap out any card with a drop out, or she can put that card she got, just had on, to the, on the, the discard pile. What would you do in this situation? Would you swap out a card? What card would you swap out? The circle one right here? You would, you would swap out this one right here? What are the, it doesn't, does it matter? Maybe not. She drew, she put that one down. She took that one. Now what is she gonna do with that? What is she, she planning on doing? What is, she, what is she trying to do here? What is she doing? What is she trying? What in the world is she, what's her plan? Does she have a plan? What's her plan? Yes, you got it. You should be able to get a four point. She can get a four-point hand. How can she get a four-point hand? So if you combine the um, two and then do the red triangles, you yes. can get a three-point hand. Those are the wrong triangles. The wrong triangles. The triangles have to point out where it's three triangles. So they can put the triangles on the top, right? And then use a free, free hand at the bottom. We can do that, right? Would that give us a hand right there? Because remember, the free card can represent what? Any hand. But how would they get the one more then? What's that? 
These two identical. So let's see what she does. She put that one down, free card. She put that one, this one, this one. Four points. Whoa! <laughs> Hey, we got LeBron James. Here, here we go. He's excited by it. <laughs> and what does she need to do? She needs to drop back up to four. <laughs> it's back to this guy. Well, <laughs> remember, he's a new player. Don't be so hard on the new player, okay? <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> what do you think? What can you do with these cards? Any, anything you can do with any, any of these cards that he has right now? You get a three point? How can you get a three point? Your red free card. Red free card? And your triangles plus the circles. This one right here? Yeah. And you can, yeah, and you can get this one right here, right? Just because yeah. we, uh, That seems like a good plan. That sounds like an awesome plan. What does he do? Does he draw from the discard pile or does he draw from the draw pile? What do you guys think? <laughs> He drew from the draw pile. And he's switching out this one with that one. That's not a bad move, actually. That's not a bad move. That's decent. And now what is he going to do? What is he going to do with that mess? What is he going to do? This one? And this one? One point. <laughs> But he's new. He's new. Leave him alone. Okay? <laughs> Leave him alone. And then we put him back up to five points. And let's start the game here, right? We know one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys kind of get a feel for the game now after going through that simulation that we did there? All right. So that's how the game works. So when Gary... Um, asked me to do this seminar uh, in the summer. He gave me all these dates. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to do it unless it's on a holiday of a Chinese person. I was like, if it's not on a holiday of a Chinese person, I'm not going to say yes to it. So September 29th was available, and that's Confucius Day. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it on Confucius Day. So I told Gary, yes, I'll do it. And then he moved my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Lord told me, right? Lord gave me this. But I still want to talk about Confucius. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Confucius is a famous Chinese philosopher and teacher, right? Very famous. Some of his sayings are, what you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. Right? This is the silver rule, right? Go without golden rule. It's a pretty good saying. Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Don't we? A lot of times, life is simpler than, it, than we, we make it out to be, and we make it more complicated. Just sometimes it's just our own baggage, right? Something, something's blind our eyes so that we can't see when life is simple. Sometimes it can get hard, but often it's simple. And we can sometimes do that with math, too. We can put on blinders, can't we, when it comes to math. Whenever we see something, we automatically put blinders on our eyes because we're, we're like, this can't be simple. So are you guys ready for the big reveal? Yeah. One is based on trigonometry. How many people guessed that? Did any of you guys? Oh, yes. Guessed it. Each card represents a trigonometric function. Sines, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Sine squared, cosine squared, tangent squared, cosecant squared, secant squared, cotangent squared. Trigonometry. <laughs> The way you place the cards indicates whether you're doing division, subtraction, multiplication, or addition. Place the cards on top of each other. Crosswise, that represents division. Parallel, it represents multiplication. Place the cards next to each other horizontally, that represents addition. Vertically, that represents subtraction. So let's look at an example. 
The goal of the game is to create one hand <laughs> that produce the value of the number one. One, one. I thought that was rather clever. <laughs> <laughs> it was all because of my wife. Right? What do you guys think this is going to represent? Sign square plus cosine square. Yeah. This one right here. Now, I, I would have to say that it's reverse of what you think. This is actually going to be tangent divided by tangent. Okay. This is going to be sine times cosecant. And this is cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Trigonometry. So whenever you guys are playing one, when I had these seven-year-olds playing one, they were doing trick all the time. <laughs> Didn't know it. It was awesome. <laughs> so future plans are to continue modifying one by possibly adding cards that affect play, similar to draw two cards, or skip cards, or reverse <laughs> cards. You know, all the good games like Uno, they always have ways that you can kind of mess around with the other players, right? Just screw them over. I would like to have something like that in my game, right? <laughs> like you thought you were going to win, ha, <laughs> ha, you're not, right? <laughs> so I want something like that. So possible future game names, <clears throat> the ultimate one, <laughs> plus one. I, I like that one, right? Another one. <laughs> And then it went bicycle. All right. So thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Can you play more than one one hand at a time? Only one one hand at a time. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. If we were interested in playing this game, are there are there copies available around? The uh, there's only two copies available. Yeah, we, I haven't mass produced them at all, unfortunately. Yeah. That's my question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If we were to visit your office, would we be able to play? Oh yes, yes you can. As long as I'm not busy. <laughs> but if you have another person coming with you, you guys can play together. That's fine. That's fine. <coughs> yes? Have you ever thought about starting out like a Kickstarter? And a Kickstarter? No, I haven't thought about that. Why haven't we thought about this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there would be an, enough. I don't know. Well, we'll see if there's enough pop uh, people that feel like this is something they would benefit from. I think it's a cute game anyway. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Is there an estimated time you think that the online, the software will be ready? I think they're supposed to have it done by... Theoretically, the end of the semester. <laughs> Theoretically, <laughs> by the end of the semester. <laughs> so that should be cool. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, okay. What in the math department maybe spurred this life? I was just talking to Dr. Taylor. And so I don't know what happened. We were talking about trig. And she was like, the students, whenever they see trig equations, they just go crazy. And so I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe we can. And I was like, maybe there's something, you know, when people think about trig, they all automatically think of it as a difficult course. And you can't do anything in it. And I said, is there a way to kind of introduce trigonometry very slowly to a student? Or in a way that they don't even realize it's trig? And then I realized I, I, I could go even further back, right? Start in high school, right? Because you have high school trick classes too. Then, then I was like, why, why not go middle school and then elementary school? It's kind of what happened, ended up happening. Yeah. What's the total number of cars? The total number of cars is 52. 52 cars in a deck. Cool. Oh, there's a, yes. Oh, it's just random. It's a prime number. <laughs> I wanted them to be able to play more than, it's possible to win in like five 
uh, rounds if you get four point hands, like for the first three, or four times, right? And then, so I don't want you, I don't want you to finish too quickly with the game. And so seventeen is a good number so that you can play at least five rounds. Yes. Do you have to get exactly 17? So no. Go over to 18 they ask me the back same back. question, the computer science guys. I'm like, no, you don't have to. It's 17 or over. Uh, they were asking, you could, you could try to give them exactly 17. That way it makes them use different hands that they might not necessarily use to be able to get that. So it's a, it's a nice modification to do exactly 17. So you can't go over it. Yeah. But as it is right now, it's 17 or over is the goal. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a good idea. Anything else? Yes? Did the instructions tell you like, what they actually mean? Like, that the red card is like signed? No, because I, I, didn't want, I didn't want any kids to be scared of the game as soon as they opened up the box. So I wanted to make sure that nobody, I wanted to be able to play, play the game and they have no idea they're doing math. That's the entire intent of the game, is I don't want you to know that you're doing math. But then once people reveal it to you, you're like, ah, that's cool. But I, I want to make it sure that it's accessible to as many people as possible. I want people in my community who has never taken anything above public high school to be able to play this game and enjoy it. And so I, for them to be scared because they say, oh, I'm doing trick and object, I can't play the game anymore, that's not what I want to do. So I try to avoid that. But I could have like a website available for people who want to know the math behind the game. And say, if you want to know the math behind the game, click, click on this, web, this link and we'll go to the website. Yeah. Yes? Have you thought about making other games based on different mathematics? <laughs> I have, but I figured that maybe this would spark interest with the senior seminar students, and they would actually do that themselves instead of me doing it. Yeah. This is more like a little pastime. It kind of hit me, and I just wanted to do it. I don't want to make this kind of my life, but it was kind of fun when I did it. Anything else? <laughs> oh, oh, well, sorry. How do you start? Who starts? Well, the way I have it in the instructions is the youngest person first. And, but she's, she's so experienced that she wanted to show him how to play the game. So that's what she did there. But <laughs> she wanted to show him how the game was played, right? She was <laughs> Don't play like that if you have somebody who's a, play, play very, very, like you don't know how to play the game when you first play it. Yes. Anything else? I think that's everybody. Thank you guys so much then.